Is Romeo just basically, I'm too talented for you to limit how much I can play? Is he at a point where you gotta live with whatever mistakes he's gonna make and you gotta correct them, but he just, he needs to play more because of what he's shown you? Yeah, he certainly has earned it. Um, and he's going to get that opportunity, certainly with having a guy like Sammy out. Uh, it's, it's just naturally going to happen for him where he's going to play more snaps. And I thought he, he made the most of him yesterday. I thought he did an outstanding job. He, he was um, a guy that showed up consistently being able to separate versus the man coverage uh, that, that we were getting. I thought he did an outstanding job. That is pet. That is Packers head coach Matt LaFleur on rookie wide receiver Romeo Dobbs. He said it earlier last week. We're going to put more on his plate this week. If you listen to a head coach, which is never a good idea, that let right, me be honest, fair. but this time it was, you were rewarded. Dobbs in week three, eight catches, 73 yards, and a touchdown team high, eight targets. He hauled in all of them. Barry, I got to ask you, is the Dobbs show here to stay? We've been waiting. I think so. I think so. You're because, in. Because the numbers you just mentioned, that was on the road at Tampa Bay. Like, the secondary of the Buccaneers is no slouch, right? I mean, he's doing that against Jamel Dean. He's doing that against Carlton Davis. Like, yeah. he's doing that against real people. Todd Bowles' defense. Right, yeah, exactly. He's doing that against real people. And so, you know, I mean, the fact of the matter is, is that in a game in which Aaron Rodgers needed to win, wanted to win, he got targeted. Not Alan Lazard, not Bob Tunyon. You know, I mean, it was... Not Aaron Ro Jones. Not Aaron Jones. It was Romeo Dobbs. He ran a route on... He's run a route on almost 70% of pass plays so far this season. He's available in 75% of Yahoo leagues. Yeah, give me some Romeo Dobbs this week. I think he should be the number one waiver wire pickup at the wide receiver position. Aaron Rodgers had a passer rating of 144 when targeting Dobbs. So I think Rodgers is going to go back to him quite consistently. We heard him praise him in the preseason. You know, he's, it's proven into the regular season in terms of the production. They play the Patriots on Sunday. Give me some Romeo Dobbs. Another veteran quarterback that's looking for anybody and everybody, Tom Brady, threw a lot to Russell Gage this week, available in 58% of leagues. Yes, we are waiting on a lot of Buccaneers reinforcements right now, but in the meantime, Gage went for 12 catches, 87 yards, and a touchdown targeted 13 times. That's not sustainable. No, and it's so frustrating because why didn't this happen the week before? Like, we, we thought it would, and then it finally did. Like, this is how the, things go. The Buccaneers offense is a mess, and we, we're hopefully getting Chris Godwin back soon. Obviously, Mike Evans will return. We still don't know the status of Julio Jones. Uh, you know, I – sure, I guess so. You know, they added Cole Beasley. They like Beasley as well. So, I mean, it's super interesting. Like, this was a good game for Russell Gage, and I get it. I, but I think he's more of a floor play than an upside thing, and I think there's a very good chance that at the end of the year when we look at that, this was Russell Gage's best game of the season. Yeah, you're not as jacked up about this one as the Dobbs conversation. So. I'm, I'm not, just because, again, fantasy production comes from two things. It comes from talent and it comes from opportunity. I, I think he's talented. I think Romeo Dobbs is talented. I know Romeo Dobbs has an opportunity. I don't know what it is with Russell Gage. It was so weird. Again, because Evans, Godwin, Julio all out for that game against the Packers. Like, I, like they're trying to find themselves in Tampa Bay in terms of that offense. And so reinforcements are coming. Again, I think most of them will be back. One of the other things that's also interesting that I'll just, I'll just throw this out since we're talking Tampa Bay. Like, I'm in a super deep league. And I'm at Scott Fishbowl. And uh, which is a, a charity a charity league that a lot of people play in. Like, it's like a 3,000-person tournament. It's like this insanely deep, crazy thing. But in that league, I went ahead this weekend and I picked up Rob Gronkowski. Just for S and Gs, as they say. You know what? Like, you just, you don't know. You know, I like, I just sort of think, if I'm Tom Brady. I'm like, listen, man. Listen, this is me. Let me meet Tom, Gronk. Hey, listen, Gronk. It's me, TB. Um... Listen, you know how Giselle's all mad at me, you know, because I left to come back. So it's my one last year. It, I need what you, you. doing? I I need I you. I need you. I need you. Like you know, put down the put down the put down the put down the funnel. Tell Camille you'll see her soon, and uh, let's get going. Have a protein you, you, shake. You have a protein yeah, shake. A and let's, let's get going. Yeah. Bring whatever Gronk you need. Bring yes. how many Gronkowskis you need. Yes. Because there's like a hundred of them. Just do, let's just get down here. That's all I'm asking. I need you, Gronk. I need you. Come here quickly. I, I have to feel like that call, if it hasn't happened already, it's going to happen soon because Brady's sitting there going, like, what are we doing, guys? Brady always goes back to his old friends in times of need, and it yeah. just feels like Gronk 
I wouldn't be shocked. All right, looking at another powerhouse offense this time in the AFC, we've talked all about Stephon Diggs. We've talked all about Gabe Davis. Isaiah McKenzie getting in on the fun. He was always the guy over summer that were like, okay, outside of the big obvious three, maybe Isaiah McKenzie, seven catches, 76 yards, and touchdown on nine targets. The Buffalo offensive output in this game was bananas. Right. You know, and I'm changing my tune because, like, uh, two weeks ago after that Monday night game, I'm like, no Gabe Davis and still McKenzie couldn't get it done. Yeah. And, like, it just, it's all digs. you know, like, it's all digs and, okay, whatever. But the fact of the matter is, is we now have three weeks of, of, of data here. And his snap rate has increased eight each game so far this season, right? Seven for 76 and one touchdown on the nine targets, as you mentioned here. I think this is interesting. Two of the three games so far this year, he's been targeted inside the 10-yard line. They're using him. It is clear that, um, as you sit here, he, he played 51% of the snaps last week in week number three. Um, I, I think that's encouraging. That's an encouraging sign. We forget, like, he had that one huge game last year, but he was basically a part-time player for the Bills last season. And so maybe it's just kind of getting him up to speed and getting him more and more comfortable, uh, him and Josh Allen more comfortable on the same page. And so expanding his route tree a little bit as well. Um, it's wide receiver 35 on the season. He was a top 10 wide receiver here in week number three. You know, if you're, if you're throwing darts, which is what you're really doing during the waiver wire, like a piece of the Bills offense is not a place, is not a bad place to throw a dart. I'm with you. And with the Bills, how often they've attacked outside the numbers with Diggs, Gabe Davis. Eventually, teams are just going to give him the middle of the field and say, we have to take away something. That's where McKenzie's going to live. So he's interesting, available uh, in almost 60% of leagues. So he's out there right now in a good offense. All right, <laughs> the inevitable uh, Cardinals wide receiver Greg Dortch, somehow still available in 83% of leagues. All he's done in the last two weeks is caught a million passes. He's helping out in PPR format. 15.3 points per game this season. That is good for wide receiver 21. I know Hopkins is going to be back at some point, but Kyler Murray is looking Dorch's way consistently. He's played 86% of the snaps. He's out oh, there. Oh, he's a out ton. there. He's out there a ton. And I feel like, I, you know, this is not a fantasy football, it's an emotional game. And I just wonder, Connor, I wonder if he had a cooler name. <laughs> Would people hey, care? Yeah. Greg Dorch sounds like a science teacher. It does. Mr. Dorch. Yeah, you know, it's like hey, a, the substitute. I, he's a substitute. Yeah, he's, a, he's the like he's like um you know sorry Mr. Dorch I, I haven't gotten my permission slip for the field trip yet I, I I'm on it uh, hey Mr. Dorch can I have some uh, can I have some extra credit right it's I tough. mean like, it just it feels like yeah. you know like I um uh, Fidelity Insurance here I, I'm Greg Dorch. Like he, like he yeah. could, he, like somebody that sells, like he, he's gonna sell me like some, you know, some equity in my house or something. I don't know. Like he's, he just, it's not a cool name, Greg Dorch. The accounting cubicle from nine to five. I mean, it just, yeah. I feel like if he had a cooler name, if he had a nickname, um, maybe he was a higher, you know, he was, you know, um, you know, if he was like Dorchy McDorcherson, maybe. I, the Dorch I don't know. master. I just feel like the fantasy community is just sort of like, eh, fluky. Ah, still fluky. Like, I mean, we're three weeks in, you know, but right. If we called him the human Dorch, I would now, have to. Now you're in. We're right? now Dorch's you're marketing team. Now you're printing up T-shirts. Yes. Now you got bumper stickers. Yeah. Now, now you're trying to do like, you know, trends on TikTok with hashtag human Dorch. Yeah. So suddenly that becomes interesting to me. He's playing the Carolina Panthers this week. He's available in 83% of, uh, of leagues. As long as Rondell Moore continues to be out, Greg Dorch, the human Dorch is going to have a role in this Cardinals offense. And so, um, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting um, as well, especially considering, by the way, AJ, AJ Green beat up. Like, he's hurt a little bit. Yeah. It seems We're at the end of the road here. Let's, we could let's say be that. honest, right? And yeah. we've still got a couple games before DeAndre Hopkins comes back. The human Dorch, I think, is viable here for at least a couple more weeks. He's so far, he's a top 21 wide receiver on the season. Crazy. All right. With the uh, moving over to the Chargers here, Josh Palmer available yep. in seventy three percent of leagues. You've told the story with Josh Palmer as it is. If one of the starter starters are out, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, play Josh Palmer and he will produce. The problem now is Keenan Allen is expected to return this week. Are we getting away from the Josh Palmer train when he We're becomes not, just, number three? Again, it depends on what you need. Like if yeah. you need somebody this week, there are other guys out here that we think will play and be productive. If you're just like, you know what, I'm just trying to bolster my bench then I think Josh Palmer makes a lot of sense. Like, he's a talented wide receiver. Yeah. And do I think that Mike Williams and Keenan Allen play every single game from here on out? No, I think there's a chance they miss. There's also a chance that this offense, as, as Herbert gets healthier, becomes better and Palmer maybe gets becomes a viable 
you know, wide receiver three or four on a consistent basis. But certainly talent and potential for opportunity are reasons why you might think about rostering Josh Palmer. Yeah, the Chargers dealing with a lot of different injuries right now. Potentially lost left tackle Rashawn Slater with the biceps injury. It's, we know Herbert's banged up. It's been it's, it's been tough it's for the been, Bolts. Yeah, unfortunately for the Chargers, the injuries just always catch up to them. So it does, It's so weird. It just – I feel so bad for my friends that are Charger fans. I will say that if Keenan Allen can't play this week against the Texans, Palmer would be right back into my lineup. All right, everybody laughed at them in the offseason when the Jaguars paid Christian Kirk and Zay Jones a lot of money. But, boy, does it look like it's worked out so far. Trevor Lawrence looks great. Zay Jones available in 90% of leagues. He's an afterthought at this point. Coming off a 10 target, 10 catch, 85 yards, and a score in week three. I'm not going to ask you if that's sustainable because that's not fair to Zay Jones. But 90% available. Dude, I mean, that's ridiculous. He's got nine. He's gotten nine or more targets in two of the three games so far this year. He's got a 23% target share on the season so far this year. He's a top 25 fantasy wide receiver through three games. He's a top 25 wide receiver, and a top 25 wide receiver should not be available in 90% of Yahoo leagues. Two things we know for sure: the Jaguars are always going to be throwing. It is a pass-first offense under Doug Peterson, which has always been his case. Again, he's a former NFL quarterback, right, who comes from the Andy Reid School of Coaching. Doug Peterson's going to want to throw. So that's, that's already there, and he's got a good quarterback. That's the so key. You've got, so he's getting a decent target share on a pass-first offense with a good quarterback. Yeah, give me some Zay Jones. I'm in. I'm in on him this week. I'm in on him the rest of the way as well. Yeah, Jaguars offense, you could say it. they're exciting right yeah. now. There's a lot to be excited about with them. Okay, the Raiders, the only 0-3 team in the NFL, but they actually have some big-time fantasy output through the air. Mac Hollins. Mac Hollins is available in almost every league, 98%. I will tell you, so, so every year I get to go to something called the NFLPA Rookie Premier. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, well. yeah, it's, it's, and, and basically what I do is – they, they invite me out there, and it's it, they invite 40 of the most – they're all offensive players, basically. The 40 of the most marketable players, rookies. And it's a chance for them to meet the rookies, meet all the partners of the NFLPA. And it's like, you know, it's brands like – it's Pepsi, and they, you know, they see their EA Matting rating for the first time. They, they you know, they sign their trading cards yep. for the first time. It's the first time they get take pictures in their uniforms, blah, 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 all sorts of stuff. And they're always – the NFLPA is so gracious. They've been such good friends to me and the program. All the, all the jerseys you see behind us here on the wall are all from the NFLPA and our friends at Fanatics. So, you know, it's um, – uh, they're, they're just – they're wonderful partners and friends. And so every year they invite me out. And the reason I bring this up is that I interviewed Mac Hollins when he was a rookie for the Eagles. And I got to tell you, I've been going, I think, six years now. I've been going this six years. To this day, my favorite interview of all the people I've met is Mac Collins. He is awesome. I love this kid. I was just like, oh, my God. He's super personable and charming and uh, funny. And I just – I get about 15 minutes with each of these kids. And I said to him, I said, listen, I hope your career is long and prosperous. But whenever it's over, you should immediately go into broadcasting because you're amazing, dude. And so um, – uh, and so Matt Collins has just been a guy that I've always sort of rooted for from, from that time that I met him. And it's great to see, like, he's had, he's had a couple of flashes with Philadelphia, Miami as well. Yep. Like, I've tracked his career, and he seems to have found a home in Las Vegas. He's run a route on 98% of pass plays so far this season. I know people will point to, hey, there was no Hunter Renfro. I get it. But great lettuce, fashion, too. You're right? Great lettuce. Like, unbelievable. Look at this. Um, the hair has grown since I have seen him as well. But the fact is, is they played 97% of the snaps. He got, you know, he's getting, uh, he's getting more targets, more receiving yards, as you see here on your screen. Obviously, the production in week three, much more significant than it was in week one or two. But the fact of the matter is, is that he's playing on the outside. You've got him That's and Adams key. on the outside, Renfro in the slot along with Waller. There are concerns how much volume can he get because you've still got, you've still got Adams, Renfro, Waller, and Jacobs. So, at best, he's probably the fifth option, but the Raiders are a team that throws a lot. It is one of the more pass-heavy teams in the NFL. I think he's a talented player, Yeah. and it feels like he's found a home in Las Vegas. Darren Waller has never been the, the picture of health as well, and so as teams continue to double and triple Devontae Adams, you know, and run for his in the slot, I do think Matt Collins is a deep, deeper league consideration. A yeah, great breakout for a guy drafted as a special teamer slash project at wide receiver. That project is now paying dividends, and you nailed it. Less than 15% of his snaps are, are in the slot. He's playing out wide. So if Renfro's back, 
You don't wipe he's, Matt Collins off the board. He's still he's still on the board, and it, it feels like he's getting a, a connection with Derek Carr. He's made some big time catches, which quarterbacks love, right? You know, I'm throwing it up there, yeah. and Matt Collins is coming down with the ball. So it's just great to see. It's just a, he's a kid that I root for and like a lot uh, as well. And so anyway, happy to see uh, Matt Collins having a, a lot of production and found a home in Las Vegas. Let's move on to DJ Shark, uh, who's now in Detroit. Here's the only concern, right? Amon Ross Amon Ross St. Brown, our Lord and Savior, right? I mean, like legendary, right? I don't know. Has the ankle injury? He played through it. I I don't know. Um, he is a sun god. Uh, Amon Ross St. Brown. Shark has six targets in two of the three games this season. We've seen to be fantasy productive. It is a offense that we know can put up fantasy points. If Amon Ross St. Brown misses any time, Shark would be the obvious beneficiary. He's available in 56% of Yahoo leagues. So he's a little bit deeper on the list. Same with his teammate Josh Reynolds, who got a team high 10 targets and 96 yards week three. I prefer Shark to Reynolds. I think just, I know Reynolds has been there longer, but I just think Shark's the better player. If I'm picking up for, but neither of them are Amon Ross St. Brown. That's right, and I think what's knocking on the door is Jamison Williams is going to play this year, yeah. so I think that has a huge impact on Josh Reynolds more so than Chark. That would give them a lot of speed out there. All right, moving over to the Patriots real quick. Devontae Parker, yes, Devontae Parker had five catches for 156 yards on 10 targets. Mac Jones leaves the game with an ankle injury that does seem serious, a yeah. high ankle sprain. This feels a little flash in the pan. Don't love it. Don't love buying in no on Jacoby it. No Jacoby Myers in this game yeah. as well. And so what does this offense look like under Brian Hoyer? It's still <sighs> going to be run heavy. Like, I... Devontae Parkers, they're also on the road at Green Bay this week. You don't love the matchup here. This Good is, defense, I mean, this is yeah. a wait and see on Parker. I'm not rushing to the waiver wire on Devontae Parker. Let's flip it the other way and look at two potential drop situations. You and I have touched on this one, I think a week ago with Darnell Mooney. He is rostered in 70% of leagues. The bottom line is he's averaging two points a game right now because out of Darnell Mooney's fault, they do not throw the football. It's, it's crazy. So four catches for 27 yards. That's a bad game. That's a bad game. Like if you're like, oh, hey, this guy got four for 27. You're like, ah, it's not, not a great half. It's not a, it's not a great half. It's definitely a bad game. You know what it is, though? It's an awful season. That's what Darnell Mooney's done this season. Four for 27. Dude, four for 27. The entire Bears staff should be fired just for that alone. Because Darnell Mooney can play football. Yeah, Darnell Mooney, There's it. no reason why Darnell Mooney should have only four receptions for 27 yards. But that's what we're sitting here with. Last week I said, you know what, I still, I'm not dumping him yet. I want to bench him. I want to wait and see. I've seen. Are you out? Drop I'm him. out. I'm out on Darnell Mooney. I'm like a Vegas Steeler. This is what you do. <laughs> All right, one more. Uh, looking at the Steelers, we know Mitch Trubisky has had his problems, and that has led to problems for Chase Claypool, also rostered in 70% of leagues, only 11 catches for under 80 yards through three games. Until the quarterback situation improves, it's hard to really so you trust might wait. Chase Claypool. I, I don't mind hanging on to him if you have him, but I also don't mind dropping him. Let me put it this way. If he was available in my league, I'm not like, ooh, that's who I want to go grab. I would rather grab if I'm if I'm investing in a non Deontay Johnson wide receiver, I'd much rather take George Pickens. I'd much rather go to the waiver wire and grab George Pickens, whose numbers don't look great. Three for thirty six this past Thursday night, but we saw that catch. Like George Pickens Pickens, it's coming. It's it's just a matter of time. I think Kenny Pickett will get there eventually, but George Pickens is too talented. Like I, I'd rather be earlier than late on George Pickens, and so I prefer Pickens to Claypool if I'm picking a non-Deontay Johnson wide receiver uh, for the Steelers. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.